30 years ago, one of the greatest engineering marvels of the 20th century was completed against all the odds. The $15 billion undersea megatunnel connected two of the world's most important cities. It drew in 1,300 workers, stretched for 50 kilometers under the sea, took six years of construction and was centuries in the making. The monumental projects almost broke two countries and many feared it would never be finished. This is the making of the Channel Tunnel, the seventh wonder of the modern world. Today, the Channel Tunnel is a piece of critical infrastructure that many of us take for granted. To get from London to Paris, all you have to do is head to St Pancras Station, jump on the train, and you'll be in the heart of Paris in two hours. That is, if everything's running smoothly. Despite strikes and recent flooding, the tunnel has served as a trusty link between the UK and France for decades. And it's not just Paris either. The Channel Tunnel links London to Europe's massive rail network. It's made freight travel a breeze too. Moving goods from the UK to Europe has never been easier, but things weren't always this breezy. Before the tunnel was built, crossing from London to Europe meant navigating the choppy and famously unpredictable weather of the English Channel. Before the tunnel, it took around six or seven hours by rail and then ferry to get from London to Paris. Now, the journey takes a third of the time, and more than 20 million people use the tunnel every year. More than the combined population of London and Paris. It's also a big money maker for the company that operates it. Getlink recently hit all-time revenue highs, pulling in 1.4 billion euros in the first nine months of 2023. And given the company's private financing, many are wondering where those profits are going now. Deloitte's annual Art and Finance report found nearly 70% of high-powered wealth managers said their clients considered fine art collecting to diversify their assets. But there's still good news for those of us whose parents don't own transit giants, because the public now has a back door into the fine art market and all of its investment potential thanks to our sponsors at Masterworks. They've opened the door for the rest of us, selling over $49 million worth of art and returning the net proceeds right to investors. Because this unique luxury has never been as accessible as it is now. Those lucky investors weren't corporate elites, they didn't have art market connections. And with Masterworks, they didn't need them. They've sold 20 paintings, 12 of those since we partnered with them, and each of them successfully delivered a profit to investors. Over 888,000 people have already joined the platform, and the B1M's viewers have been getting priority access for over a year now by using our special affiliate link down there in the video description. Now, let's get back to how this historic piece of infrastructure was built. The Channel Tunnel, or Channel as it's affectionately referred to, first opened in 1994 after six long years of construction. At the time, it was the longest undersea tunnel in the world, and to this day remains the only physical link between London and Europe. The Channel Tunnel is in fact made up of two main tunnels running parallel to each other, and a third smaller service tunnel, 4.8 metres wide between them, that's used for ventilation and to provide access. The two main tunnels are each 7.6 metres in diameter and spaced 30 metres apart. Both are high enough to comfortably hold a double-decker bus. Every 250 metres are small ducts between the main tunnels. They help dissipate the air pressure in front of the train to relieve aerodynamic drag and help it move faster. The total length of the tunnel route is 50 kilometres, of which 38 kilometres is located under the sea floor. The tunnels aren't actually straight lines, but curve up and down and left to right, so they can stay within the layer of chalk at the bottom of the channel. At its deepest point, the tunnel is 75 metres below sea level. At its opening in 1994, the American Society of Civil Engineers named the Channel Tunnel one of the seven wonders of the modern world. And when you look at the scale of it, it's not hard to see why. No other underwater tunnel had come close to achieving what this one had accomplished. There had always been a desire to connect the British Isles with Europe. No matter how much the UK may think and sometimes vote against it, Great Britain is intrinsically linked to the continent both economically and socially through trade and the movement of people. 
As early as 1802, there were plans for a tunnel, although back then they only wanted one big enough for horse-drawn carriages to travel through. Some Brits thought this was just a ploy by the French to launch an invasion, and the idea wasn't so popular. In the late 1950s and early 60s, a series of bridge and tunnel ideas were put forward and in 1974, British construction workers actually started digging their way to France. But just a year later, the UK government called the project off. This is the grave of the biggest engineering project ever attempted in Europe. It wasn't until the 1980s that French President Francois Mitterrand and British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher began making plans to build what we now know as the Channel Tunnel. With record unemployment, key industries collapsing and massive civil unrest, the early 80s were a turbulent time in the UK, and neither the British or French governments had the funds to build this daunting megaproject, so it would have to be privately funded. Instead of a series of suspension bridges or causeways, the two governments opted for the plan put forward by the Balfour Beatty Construction Company, which was later taken on by a consortium called the Tronsmonch Link. The plan was to build two tunnels at a cost of 3.5 billion US dollars. In the end, it ballooned to more than 15 billion dollars in today's money, and some reports say it was upwards of 21 billion. Construction works began in 1988. First, the engineering and design teams had to figure out exactly where the tunnels could be dug, and the geology of the seabed was carefully examined. At the bottom of the English Channel is a thick layer of chalk, but below that is a layer of chalk mull which is easier to bore through. The service tunnel was the first to be excavated so the engineers could see what the ground conditions were like before the main tunnels were then constructed. The tunnel boring machines got to work in 1988. Five TBMs dug from France, while six TBMs dug from the UK. Cast iron segments bolted together and precast concrete rings were used to line the tunnels after the TBMs had dug through them. An enormous amount of chalk was excavated throughout this process and transported back through the tunnel using conveyor belts. On the British side, engineers used the chalk to build a platform at the foot of Shakespeare Cliffs near Dover. One of the most difficult tasks on the Channel Tunnel projects was making sure that both the British side and the French side actually met up in the middle. Special lasers and survey equipment were used, but on such a large project, no one was 100% certain that the technique was going to work. By 1990, the two sides of the tunnel were due to meet up. It came at a point in construction where many feared the project might never be completed. It was plagued by severe costs, schedule and safety problems. But in December, the two sides of the service tunnel finally came together. The technique had worked. Two workers, one British and one French, shook hands through the opening. For the first time in modern history, you could walk from Britain to France. Then, in 1991, the two main tunnels were connected and things kicked up a gear. Crossover tunnels, land tunnels from the coast to the terminals, piston relief ducts, electrical systems, fireproof doors, the ventilation system, the train tracks, all had to be added. Finally, by the 10th of December 1993, the first test run was completed through the entire Channel Tunnel. And on the 6th of May 1994, the route officially opened. 30 years later, more than 20 million people use this incredible piece of infrastructure every year. And those three tunnels have connected an entire continent. It goes to show, once again, the remarkable power of construction. This video was sponsored by Masterworks. You can learn more and skip their waitlist at the link in the description. Don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into BrickBorrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at BrickBorrow.com. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, from the channel that connects you to some of the best infrastructure in the world, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.